I'm Nick. I'm the drummer from uh, the Swiss German band Ad Infinitum. I'm 29 years old, if that is of any interest. Um, <laughs> we're a band we've been around since 2018, 2019. And with our first album coming out in 2020, right in pandemic. Um, and we've been a little productive since then. And now in uh, October 2024, our fourth studio album is coming out called Abyss via Napalm Records. As the previous ones, we have a very good partnership with them. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we cannot wait to deliver this product to all of you people and share this piece of music with you. And then as well, play it live at least in Europe and the US, <laughs> unfortunately not yet in Australia, but hopefully we will see you there one time. Very good, brother. Thanks for joining us today. It's a pleasure to speak with you. Likewise. So you mentioned Ad and finishing releasing your album Abyss on October the 11th, mate. So can you tell us a bit more about the album musically and what you were going for with it? I definitely can. Um, First of all, I think the most important part about that album is that we kind of stepped away from the symphonic part of it. That was a huge part of our music for the first three albums. It was not an initial choice that we said, no, we want to do it anymore. And no, we don't want to do it anymore. And we do it like with an entire other production. Um, it, we kind of said, we don't want to have it just for the sake of having it. We just want to see where the music leads us. and. It just happened that when we wrote the first songs in our song camp, uh, we just realized that there is not really the need for uh, orchestral elements. And we just happened to um, create soundscapes and, and nice atmospheres without those instruments. And there we said, OK, it would be maybe just too much and everything over the top to add now back the orchestral elements. It was not an initial choice that we step away from symphonic metal or something like that. It just happened in the writing process. Um, this is the biggest musical part um, that kind of changed. On the other hand, I have to say that I have a feeling we kind of grew up <laughs> a little bit. It's like when you when you continue writing music, you just change, and it 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 feels like we think way way more about every. A little part of a song than we did on the on the previous albums. I'm not saying that we didn't think at all about <laughs> the uh, the early music. I'm not saying that it's like um we are questioning more since um since this very album. We already did that with chapter three um, when we had this songwriting camp. I think this is also um the biggest part why we are questioning that much because we are all in the same room together writing songs, which wasn't the case for the chapter one and chapter two because of pandemics and. We were living so far apart. Um, and I think this just led to uh, the next steps. Oh. Yeah, this is the uh, the biggest part musically that kind of changed. Yeah, very good. Now, today you release the singles Surrender, Outer Space, My Halo, and Unstoppable. So overall, are they a good sonic representation of what to expect from the whole album? Um, Kind of, yeah. I mean... It's not. It's not that uh, these three songs like say everything from the uh, from the record, but it's a, it's a nice overview. But uh, I can tell you, um, there are more ups and downs coming. <laughs> that's that's not everything. Uh -huh. Now you sort of touched on this before, but the press release calls it your most dynamic, modern, and progressive record to date. Like, do you agree with that statement? Most dynamic, progressive record today. Could be. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, most most modern, definitely, most progressive. Yeah, could make could make sense as well. I think so. I think so. as I, as I said earlier, I have the feeling that, that we uh, spend much more time yeah. thinking about every little piece in our music. Um, it's just yeah, it's it it seems like we we just put way more work in it. I, I don't know how that was even possible, but <laughs> how we managed to do that. <laughs> cool. Now, I read a quote from the band that said, Abyss marks a new era for Ad Infinitum, calling it a journey connecting three albums starting in the ominous darkness of Abyss. So does that mean that Abyss is the first part of a trilogy? That's true. Yeah. Um. Exactly, yeah. Uh, the trilogy we already had, like in our in the press kit, we have um, Abyss, we have Surface, and we have Elysium. 
which um, tells a little little bit of a story, uh, traveling from a dark, uh, a dark place of mind, where you slowly reach the surface, you get better, you heal until you reach Elysium, which is like the final state of happiness. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it, it's important uh, to mention that it's not like the previous three albums um, connected to a historical figure or something like that. It's more personal experiences and feelings that we process here in these pieces of music and will process in the future as well. Mm -hmm. So what story does Abyss tell? Um, it's, it's, it's more, like as, as I said, uh, the, the state of mind is very dark and depressing one. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it's a place of weakness um, where you try to evolve from. And evolve to these uh, uh what you will you, you you evolve and you can see it like in the next albums that are there to come mm -hmm. so this is the worst state of mind oh yeah so as, as you progress through the state of minds musically over the three albums will that affect the the musical direction i guess of the albums like will this one be more dark because it's a dark state of mind and then will they sort of move through as you go mm, yes and no um in the first place Yes, because uh, when we started writing you, of, of course, we had the concept before we started writing the music. Um, and then you already enter the the recording room with a, or, or the, the song camp with a certain um, yeah weight on your shoulder. <laughs> it's like um, you get into this, uh, you get into this mood, you get into this feeling, but still we don't want to limit ourselves it's not like we said oh we're writing this album about weakness and dark places um, um it's not that we limited ourselves when we went into the songwriting camp that we said oh because this album is about weakness and the dark place of mind in general a dark spot um in your head everything has to be bad and and harsh and brutal and uh, carry a certain vibe um of course kind of did but we didn't want to limit ourselves there. Um, so on the other hand, also when it comes like, for example, to the surface, uh, to the very happy, <laughs> well, let's say very, um, very calm and peaceful uh, part, everything will not be la, 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 <laughs> and, and nice and, and, and fairy tales and blah, blah, blah. Um, it, it generates a certain mood musically and lyrically, though lyrically, this is a Melissa part. <laughs> I hope I'm not uh, stepping on her toes there. Um, but uh, it's not a entire, a, a, a entire, how do you say, uh, this will be a, a, a brutal metalcore genre album and this will be a pop album or something like that. Mm -hmm. Just create the bass and then we let it flow. Right. So with, with something like this, it is a trilogy over three albums. Like, do you write all three of them at once and record them all at once, or do you, do you focus on one at a time? No, um, we focus on one at a time. Right. And does, does, that, does that allow for it to, to breathe a bit more, I guess, between albums? Exactly. And otherwise, we still want to tour in between albums. And if we would write three albums at once, sure. uh, we would, I guess we would have to step down from touring for two years or something yeah. like that, and we don't want to do that. <laughs> 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 very true now you sort of touched on this a bit before but you've dropped a lot of the symph symphonic metal elements for this album is, is that something that's going to be the band moving forward from now or is that just for this album mm, honestly i don't know um as, as i mentioned earlier it was not a, a decision we made in the first place and we said we don't want to do that anymore and uh jump on from there it just kind of happened um i can assume that we continue like this, but I don't want to be certain because, for example, on the on the next record or the record after that, if there happens to be a, a, a great song where we all like, oh, my God, there have to be a castles in there. And that very uh, opening C part that can absolutely happen. And no one knows. So I wouldn't limit ourselves there to say we're not doing symphonic anymore. Um, I just can't tell whatever the music and the song will allow us. <laughs> That's fair enough. <laughs> Now, you're about to head out on tour with Camelot as well. So tell us about that run of shows. Exactly. Yeah, we're starting in around about two weeks uh, in Europe together with our friends in Blackbriar. Um, we already toured with them in Europe, unfortunately, or <laughs> Europe again uh, for you guys. Um, and Frozen Crown. 
is in this package as well. It's a uh, it would be a great package, great venues um for powerhouse bands um smashing every evening, and uh, I think it would be great. I personally cannot wait to go back on tour. I bet you. Uh, it was the <laughs> the US tour in in um, April May. It was we were kind of nervous because uh, at least me and the boys because yeah. Melissa already had uh, had done US tours. But we didn't, so it was oh the first time, whatever. And um, it was it felt like a really really great adventure. Um, and then it was July, and then it was August. Uh, but it, and then it was already like three four months ago, and it was like oh when can we head out again? <laughs> and now's the time. Yeah. And then in early twenty twenty five, you hit the road with a Luberty and infected rain. So that should be a lot of fun. Exactly. It will be, especially since this tour kind of leads us to cities and countries uh, where we haven't been yet, like Greece. Um, I think we're playing in... Oh, I have to take a look. Um, oh, sorry, I can't see it in my calendar. Um, I can't tell by head now. So usually you get in the nightliner and then you get out. Oh, I'm in this country. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um but it's but it's it leads us to very different places that we haven't been before and we haven't played our music yet. So this is a, a very very great experience. And um, the second uh, with Elevati, we had the pleasure to uh, share some shows in twenty twenty three summer. No, it was twenty twenty two. I think it was summer twenty twenty two. I think we shared. Uh, we opened two shows for them, um, and it was very nice. They're also such great people. Uh, kind of way to see them again um, and infected rain I haven't met them yet um, but when I when I was younger um, in the city I grew up there was uh, like a poster of infected rain um, playing in, in the area close by um, and I was I don't know 12 back then <laughs> so <laughs> wow that cool. <laughs> <laughs> so cool and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell them this story definitely <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic <laughs> all right Nicholas well thanks very much for your time mate Abyss is out October the 11th so best of luck with it, mate, and hopefully we do see you on this side of the world sooner rather than later.